the map of Africa, like many regions, appear distorted due to the projection method commonly used in world maps, particularly the Mercator projection. This projection, while used for navigation, distorts the size and shape of land masses, especially as they get closer to the poles. Here is why. Watch and pay attention. This is a concept, it's a belief, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about that and then ask you to imagine um, a world without whiteness. So, first of all, there are times that we believe things that are simply not true. And one example, I want you to think about this for a while. Something that you perhaps have learned in grade school about the world. We teach in geography, we teach that, how many continents are there? So if you said seven, you are absolutely wrong. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. What determines a continent? We define it as a large landmass surrounded on all sides by water. Look at Europe. And Europe and Asia is one landmass. Europe is not separated. Now, if you don't include Europe as a continent, you're going to get that answer wrong. But probably in school you learned that Europe and Asia are separated by the Ural Mountains. Check out Mr. Webster. He says nothing about a mountain separating continents. Europe is not a continent. It is a peninsula. A peninsula is a large landmass surrounded on three sides by water. So why is Europe a continent? We have come to believe that Europe is a continent because Europeans told us it was a continent. That in itself is part of the concept of whiteness. Europe is not a continent. It's a small part of Eurasia. And yet, for the longest time, and probably up until today, you believed it. And if you talk with people outside of this gathering, and you ask them, so how many continents are there? They say seven, and they'll rattle it off. And then you'll say, no, Europe isn't a continent. Oh, yes, it is. Because they learned it in the fifth grade. And they learned it well, but they learned it incorrectly. While there is no such thing as race, there is such a thing as racism and white supremacy. Racist, and this is a definition that I have for you by two very important African scholars who live in the States. Dr. Francis Fritz Welsey, who is a psychiatrist, Dr. Wade Nobles, who is a psychologist. They define racism or white supremacy as a false ideology created by Caucasians which declares non-Caucasians inferior to them. Racists use their power to define reality and convince others to respond to their definition of reality as if it were their own. Understand that. Understand that very clearly. So in that context, power is the key. Racists must use power to impose their false beliefs on others. So in that context, black people, African people, are not racist. Because, one, we don't have the power to impose our ideologies on them. And based on my study of history, I don't know of a, of, a, of a country in Africa that has ever enslaved white people. We have never enslaved white people, or Muslims, or Chinese. That is not in our nature, that is not who we are. Now we may be prejudiced, we may have prejudged beliefs. Some folks don't like people with bald heads. Some people don't like fat folks. That's a prejudice. Everybody is prejudiced. But you must have power to impose your prejudged beliefs on your intended victims. So we have to be very clear about language so that we can have intelligent discussions and, and make intelligent arguments about our points of view. Now, I want to look at another definition because I want to build on these definitions to help us understand history. A continent is defined, is defined by Webster as a large and extensive, and extensive land mass with, one, uh, with extensive plains or plateaus and one or more mountain ranges that is surrounded or nearly surrounded by water. The seven continents, according to size, are Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Antarctica, Europe, and Australia. Now, you all are in school, so you know about continents, correct? Yes. So this is not anything that you didn't already know, correct? Yeah. All right, good. So I'm pretty sure that you all are using in your school 
the same maps that I was given when I was your age. And that's this map. This is called the Mercator Projection Map. It was a map that was created by a European um, called Mercator in 1569. This is a map that was designed by a European, and it was designed because he put Europe in the center of the map. See, whoever creates a map creates where the beginning is, where the center is. If you ever go to Australia, Australia, they have maps that are turned upside down. Australia is at the top of the map and everybody else is at the bottom. If you go to Japan, in Japan they have maps where Japan is in the center of the world and everybody else is to the east or the west. Whoever creates the map determines your reality. Now remember Webster's definition. A continent is a land mass with various mountain plains and plateaus that is surrounded or nearly surrounded by water on all four sides. We can see that that definition certainly applies to Africa, it applies to North America, South America, Australia, and Asia, but guess what? There's no such thing as the continent of Europe. There is no such thing as the continent of Europe. All Europe is, is the northwest appendage of the continent of Asia. And what it represents is a group of men who call themselves Caucasians or Europeans drew an imaginary line down the western part of Asia and said everything to the east of that line is Asia, everything to the west of that line is Europe. Now somebody can steal a continent. I want you to imagine what they can do to your mind. <laughs> So it's about knowing history so that you can understand what happened then, what is happening right now, so that you can better determine what is going to happen tomorrow, and through an understanding and application of history, you can determine what your tomorrow is going to look like. And so in 1974, a German cartographer, map maker, by the name of Arnold Peters, produced this map, which is now the official map that is used by the United Nations. This is a map which more accurately shows all of the continental land masses in accurate proportion to each other. And you notice in this map, Africa is much bigger than it was in the other map. And Europe is much smaller. So what happened, let me take you back so you can see the difference between the two. See how large Europe is and how small Africa is? That's a distorted perception. This is a more accurate perception of the relationship based on land mass, square miles of Africa to Europe. So whoever creates the map determines your reality. So you cannot allow other people who have been enslaved to you who disparage you because of your black skin to determine your reality. You must use knowledge and study so that you can determine who you are and what is real to you. The Mercator projection was created by Gerardus Mercator in 1569, primarily for navigation. It preserves angles and directions, make it useful for sailor. However, it distorts the size of land masses. Countries and continents near the equator, like Africa, appear smaller, while those farther from the equator, like Europe and North America, appear much larger than they are in reality. Since Africa lies mostly along the equator, it appears smaller on the Mercator map. In reality, Africa is massive. Africa is about 14 times the size of Greenland, but on the Mercator map, Greenland often appears roughly the same size or even larger. Africa is larger than the combined size of the United States. China and India, but this fact is not obvious on many world maps. Historically, map design has been Eurocentric, with Europe placed prominently at the center of the world map and appearing much larger than its actual size. This has led to criticism that traditional map projections like Mercator reinforce a squid world view that minimizes the importance and size of non European regions like Africa and South America. Other map projections, like Gay Peter's projection, attempt to correct size distortions. The Gay Peters projection preserves the relative size of land masses, so Africa appears more larger and closer to its true proportion. However, 
all map projection come with some form of distortions shape distance direction or areas as representing the three-dimensional earth on a two-dimensional surface is inherently challenging in short the distortion of africa on many world map is the result of the projection method used especially mercator projection which prioritizes navigational accuracy over geographical accuracy this has contributed to the misrepresentation of africa through size and importance Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like and share your thoughts in the comment box below. Until next time, cheers and have a good one.